My very first composing project was an independent feature film that I got just three months after deciding to transition my career to film and television scoring. And I think that the story might be helpful to aspiring composers in an unexpected way. At the time, I was producing music for indie bands and pop artists, and so I had no prior credits as a media composer. Even more surprising about this project is that during my first introduction with the director, they actually told me that they were already deep into the selection process with two other candidates. So the vibe was sort of like, thanks but no thanks. And I think that this position, honestly, is where a lot of first-time composers find themselves. So I'm gonna try and briefly dissect what went right, allowing me to get the opportunity despite originally being told no and having no prior experience in this specific niche of music creation. We're gonna talk about what I learned from the experience overall and how getting that job over a decade ago is related to my career today as a professional composer writing music on lots of different projects for film, TV, and video games. So if you're a musician, composer or aspiring composer and this sort of information is going to be helpful to you please just take a second to like the video and subscribe to the channel because it's dedicated to helping beginner and professional music makers alike so how did i get my first indie feature so quickly after deciding to be a composer let's dive in The first thing that we should talk about is how I got that initial phone call with the director where he kind of took the call as a favor to my friend. Because as I mentioned, he already felt that he was gonna go with one of two other people that had already been pitching for this film. So at the time I had a friend who was a drummer in a band that I had recorded. And he told me that he was working locally on set for this low budget independent film that was being made in Connecticut, which is where I live. And when I say low budget, I'm talking somewhere between maybe like two hundred and four hundred thousand dollars for a feature film that's really really low a dramatic indie feature doing festival runs can typically be between one and three million so it's not a hard and fast rule but making a film for under a million dollars is a very difficult thing to do and as i mentioned at the time i had just started to think about scoring to picture so this was like perfect for me because i knew nothing about film scoring and this was a first time director which meant that i felt it was an obtainable project to dip my toes in and see how I enjoyed the process compared to producing for music artists. So I asked my friend if he would feel comfortable making an introduction for me to the director, and he set up the phone call that I mentioned before. During this phone call, the director was very nice, but my feeling was that he seemed kind of conflicted about saying no because he just didn't want to listen to more demos. He just wanted to make a decision with who he'd already been speaking with, which is totally understandable. He had been deep into that process for a while now. And in a respectful manner, I looked for ways to have him reconsider. So I was talking to him and I said things like, listen, I'm from Connecticut. Your whole film, your whole story, it all takes place here and you live here. So I can come to you or you can come to my studio and we can go over scenes and it'll basically be much easier than trying to work remotely with someone in LA where these other composers were from. This was about 12 years ago, so this is long before remote collaboration became a very normal thing. I basically said, tell me what you need to feel comfortable and I'm gonna provide it to show you that your film is in good hands and that we're gonna work well together. And he said something along the lines of, I really appreciate it. If something changes, I'll let you know, which is a very common thing that people say when you're not gonna get the job. And you know, he said, you're welcome to email me in the future for something and maybe the timing will work out better, but I can't make any promises because I think we're gonna go with one of these other people. So I got off the phone and I asked my friend for his email since he did mention emailing him, and I actually found the emails between us from all those years ago. I'm gonna read it to you, but I'm just gonna paraphrase it for time purposes. But this was basically my next message. Hey, this is Jonas. I really appreciate you taking the time on the phone just now. I understand that you've been through this process and we're just meeting now, but I would hate for you to make a decision about the music for your film without having all the options in front of you. So if you would send me a scene or some footage to work with, I'm happy to do some work on spec and I'd love to show you what I'm capable of. And he responded to that with the following. I don't want you to spend a lot of time on the project and come up with temps because we're close to selection with my other guys. However, if you're interested in seeing some stills and learning about the movie, go ahead to this website and you can read about the story. If you have time and you want to invest that time into temp, go ahead, 
But at this point, I cannot make any promises for work on this project. I hope that you understand. So that was actually a really nice thing that he did because he was trying to be respectful of my time, knowing that it was very unlikely he was even gonna consider it. But to me, that was like a full green light. He responded, he mentioned sending something. So my thought process was, I'm gonna be an optimist. I'm gonna go and dive headfirst into this because I truly had nothing to lose. So I go ahead and make a demo. I send it the next day and I wait. A few days later, I get a phone call. It's the director. He's intrigued by the demo, but he says it's not the tone they're going for on the film. However, even though I have no film credits, he does feel it was a good showcase of musicianship and production quality, and so he wanted to give me a shot by course correcting me and have me do another demo that was more in line with what they were going for. And this is what he did with the other proposals that had pitched. So now he was basically letting me into the selection process and giving me the same chance that the other composers had, which is really all that I could ask for. So he goes ahead and he gives me a brief of what him and the producers are looking for tone-wise for their project. And he tells me to submit the track as soon as I can with a quote for doing the score. I ask him what the music budget is, which as I said, a low budget film is gonna have a pretty terrible music budget. So he tells me that the LA people are asking for around 7,000, but I have no credits. So he's expecting me to come in lower. So this next part that I'm about to share with you, it's honestly not how I would approach this today, but that's sort of part of learning. And what I do is I send the demo in and I send a quote for 5,000. So I was lowballing myself. I really wanted the gig. The other people came in at seven, what I should have done is come in at like six or maybe 6,500. I may not have had film credits, but in hindsight, I was a producer with a decent amount of experience and I had a whole recording studio which allowed me to record and use lots of live instruments on the score. At this point, looking back, I personally feel that I should not have gone so much lower than what the other people offered I feel like I kind of sold myself short, and I think that's an important lesson that, yes, you do want to be competitive, obviously you want to get the job, and when you have no other credits, it's a really difficult thing to balance how much should I charge versus uh, how much other people might be charging when you really, really want it. But this is something that I've learned a lot about over time, and so it wouldn't be my recommendation to go that much lower than someone else just to get the job. With that being said, something I did right in this negotiation was that I said that for that price, after 12 or 24 months so that the film could have a run in festivals and so on, that the publishing of those pieces of music would go back to me entirely so that I could then license the tracks out or use them as another source of income if an opportunity arose. I do believe that when working on super low budget stuff like this, that's not a bad way so that you don't undersell yourself in the long term. But again, this was like a big learning experience for me. So I got the job, I did the score, and here's a really brief clip of what that ended up sounding like 12 years ago. So I don't think that's terrible for my very first score ever, to be quite honest. Uh, obviously, I've improved an incredible amount on my craft over the years, but here's the important question. How does this relate to the rest of my career where I've been able to go on and work consistently for the 12 years since and get to be a part of increasingly exciting projects? So drum roll, here's the answer. It doesn't relate at all. This film did a few festivals and that was it. No one called me to work on another film because of this one. The director didn't go on to do other projects. And that's not a bad thing. It doesn't say anything about the film itself or the director. I didn't actually expect any of that to happen. I got to work with and meet 
very kind and creative people. They were super encouraging, and that's a really important thing when you're so young in your career. So I'm incredibly grateful to the director because being able to do this first project gave me the confidence to keep going in this direction, and it really allowed me to do I'd say exactly what I wanted it to do, which was to test the waters as to whether or not this career choice was going to be the right fit for me creatively and personally. So with that all being said, the next question becomes what did create that snowball effect for me, which allowed me to go from this one-off indie film to being able to replace my main income with composing full-time on studio projects. And the answer is that I started working with other composers who were much more experienced than me, and through them, I was able to build up my skills. While I built up my skills, I was also able to add to my portfolio with work that people recognized, and that made a huge difference when I introduced myself to get new projects for myself being a part of projects that they had been aware of made a big difference. So if you're interested in applying for a job like that, either now or in the future, make sure to check out my educational website, modernmediacomposer.com, where you can sign up for free virtual instruments and more educational content just like this. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch, and as always, I hope this was helpful.